I just want a reminder that any trustees that are here would like to meet in the fellowship hall after church today for a short meeting. Okay, so there will be a short meeting of trustees when Roger says it's short. It is. <laughs> doing that. So we might right after worship? Yes. In the fellowship hall. All right. Hey, thank you. 
you all, uh, many of you have been contacted as we've been working on nominations for the coming year, and uh, it's gone wonderfully easy. I, I'm not saying this to butter you up, but I don't think I've ever served in a church where nominations goes so smoothly. It's just wonderful. So thank you very much for your willingness to serve. More importantly, your willingness to serve the ministry of yes. Well, let's listen to our prayer leader and we'll begin worship.
Please be seated. That hymn reminds me, you know, just of the wonder of life we've had lately. I don't know if you follow the news, some of you occasionally, and different things catch our attention. But uh, one of the things we're being told, and I suppose folks are maybe, I don't know if they're starting to stock up or not, but we're, we're supposed to be going to have a big shortage of tomatoes. Because out in California, where they think they grow them all, and I, I wanted to say, why don't they make an announcement to all those tomato companies? Just come to the Midwest and you can gather up our extras. And you're more than enough to go around. Uh, but, you know, it just reminded me how we are blessed. You know, and yes, there are challenges and difficulties, but for thy bounty, for thy goodness, let us continue to lift up joyful songs to the Lord our God. And would you join with me? In our opening prayer of confession, let us pray. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, out of the depths we cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear us. Let your ears be attentive to our supplications. If you, O Lord, should mark in agrees, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you that you may be feared. We wait for you, Lord. Our souls wait. And in your word, we hope, our souls wait for you, Lord, more than watchmen for the morning. Our hope is in you. With you, Lord, is steadfast love. And with you is more than enough of redemption. You redeem us from all our enemies. May all your promises be fulfilled through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In your worship program on the screen, we have... As we have known, uh, most recently updated prayer concerns that we've been asked to lift up, uh, particularly individuals that we're asking you to continue to pray for. Um, any others that we should be lifting up? Eleanor Ricketts and Lolita Dunahy. Uh, we, we ask you to continue to pray for both of them as they're recovering. Any she's, she's really she's doing well. Her her back has um, healed. I mean, it's healing now. She just has trouble when she stands. Her back hurts, but she, you know, she she was just no. I don't need you to help me. Well, yesterday I kind of completely forgot about her all day, and I thought, well, I hope she was able to get up and get something to eat at least. <laughs> so I better check on her today. I think she's fine now. <laughs> <laughs> Good That's thing you're not eating the pigs. <laughs> They'd be out of the bar and looking for food. <laughs> so if you see the lead off running around the house, you know, like, he doesn't better. <laughs> no, the family's been doing well. It's been a blessing. I know she's felt tremendously blessed to have the love and care of her family with her during this time. Eleanor's doing pretty well with recovery and uh, pray for her uh, continued strengthening. Hopefully, maybe get to come home this week. Things go well. Pastor, I, I heard from my daughter that Antonetta Knight is doing much better. She's uh, probably at a point where we, we can keep her in our hearts and prayers, but she doesn't need to be on her prayer list. God has really worked a miracle in her life. Yeah, that's for sure. Well, thank you. Glad to hear that. Um, and uh, I know that. Do uh, you want to give an update on Pam, June? Yes, you. So. <laughs> I don't know how much we already know or don't know for updates, but she is on hospice. Um, she took a little bit of a downturn in her physical health as well as her mental health. And so um, they're all just taking turns staying with her, and we just want to keep the family in our prayers. I know Pam greatly appreciates your prayers for all of them. Update on Dean Lassiter. Uh, I spoke with Tanya, his daughter. She said he is uh, still continuing chemo through the middle of September. He has appreciated all the prayers and would like them to continue. He's doing really well. And our family would like to thank you for the expression of sympathy. Well, let's 
come together in prayer with these concerns and also especially those in our hearts as we just prayed in our prayer of confession always keep in mind that he is more than able to redeem us from all iniquities. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we praise you and adore you for your goodness, your faithfulness, your holiness, and the love that you manifest that we cannot fully measure the height, the depth, the width, the length. Your love goes beyond anything that we can fully understand, yet we Rejoice in being able to accept and give ourselves fully to your healing, mercy, and grace. We do pray for these, O oh God, who continue to face challenges and difficulties. We pray for peace. We pray, as you told us, for the peace of your people. As Psalm 122 reminds us to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We pray for peace in Ukraine in other troubled areas of this world. We pray in our own homes, in our families, in our communities, gracious Father. For we know that there is your peace that passes all understanding available to us. We do lift up these that are facing health issues, other challenges. We pray for your spirit to sustain, refresh, and renew them. We pray for healing in Jesus' name, and we honor and glorify you for these instances that we are able to lift up where folks have experienced your healing. And we know nothing else but to say thank you and praise you, God, for this goodness and faithfulness. And we also praise you and thank you for your goodness and faithfulness as we go through the valleys of the shadow of death. Those words that you asked, Lord Jesus, to your disciples, as many folks were turning away, speak powerfully to us. You also wish to go away. And may your spirit always prompt us to remember and to claim as our own that response. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. May we never forget, especially when we face those times of darkness, you are the one who has conquered sin, death, condemnation, and makes available to us your power and resurrection and your glory, especially in those hard times. Lord, we thank you for being with those that we know who serve in the military. We pray for them, for your peace, for your protection, for your guidance. We pray for those that we know within our families and community who are going through transitions. We, we, we pray for Calvin Beba's granddaughter and her husband who are moving this weekend to a different base. We, we, we pray for the Freedman family trying to finish up a move and others that may be going through those transitions. We're grateful, O oh God, that you continue to provide what's necessary for us to live our lives in service, in ministry, and in celebration. And so we lift to you these are prayers, those that we've been lifting up in our own hearts before you personally. We ask all of these things 
in Jesus' name, praying as he has taught us as his church. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
being faithful in, in our giving, so we continue to seek to look at that and have increased what we've been giving as well. And so we don't ask anything of you more than what the Lord is willing to supply. Would you pray with me? Father God, we thank you for your favor, for your goodness, your mercy. We thank you that you do provide all that we need. And we ask that you continue to give us wisdom as we respond to those needs, as we most of all make sure that folks hear the good news of Jesus' love. We ask this to the glory and honor of his name. Amen. So as we receive our offering, if you want to turn to 170 or you can follow along on the screen, Oh, how I love Jesus. Yes. 
to go to Scripture and tell them of the good news about Jesus. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here's water. What can stand in the way of my being baptized? And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away, and the eunuch did not see him again, but went on his way rejoicing. Philip, however, appeared as a Vesotus and traveled about, preaching the gospel in all the towns until he reached Theresea. so important for us to be able to 
read and share those stories. So, I, I didn't bring you a book because you already have some books, but I brought you a, a bookmark. You're welcome. And uh, it reminds us on the back a scripture verse. In everything we have won more than victory because of Christ who loves us. I'm sure that nothing can separate us from God's love, not life or death, nor angels or spirits, nor the present or the future, and not powers above or powers below. It's from Romans chapter 8. Let's see. How about you take three more back with you? Three more back. Okay. Well, pray with me for a moment. Father God, we thank you this morning for your love and for, for good books, but especially for your good book. It tells us what you make known about yourself. Help us to continue to grow and learn and bless your children as they continue to enjoy the wonder and the excitement of growing and learning. Keep them in your peace, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for coming up. Have a great day. So what are you reading? What are you reading? Think about the account. That's not exactly what Philip asked the Ethiopian unit, was it? Do you understand what you were reading? He asked him. What are you reading? Um, That's one of the first things that one of my mentors would almost always ask me, even if it had been two or three years since I talked to him. He wanted to know, what are you reading? Nancy and I are blessed with the relationship with our, our kids' in-laws, and that's one of the first things Nancy always asks our daughter Jennifer's dad, when we see him, what have you been reading? Because he loves to read. And he's glad to talk about what he's been reading. And, and they often exchange kind of different suggestions for things that they might want to read. And I'm sure that that's true for many of you as well. Because I know that there's a lot of readers in this congregation, in this community. But I want you to think about it from that perspective. Because one of the things that we wrestle with in our daily ministry is how do we, how do we engage other folks? How do we engage with other folks in doing what we know? And I, I'm pretty sure that almost all of you here know that Jesus has told us to go into all the world and to share the gospel and to be doing that as we're going about life. You know, we don't have to we don't have to take some kind of special course or do certain things in a certain way. We're just supposed to go about it in our daily living, sharing the truth of what we know of Jesus Christ. Yet one of the things we struggle with is somebody at Ace Hardware or in a supermarket or at the post office or at school or on the telephone without it sounding like you're condescending or judgmental or poking your nose in where it don't belong, as we used to say. Well, one of the things is, based on those simple things that we know about each other, and, and even, even strangers, one of those, that, that mentor that I was talking about, one of the main reasons he would ask that question is because he flew a lot on airplanes, traveled around the world, still continues to fly quite a bit, uh, speaking and leading seminars uh, on sharing the gospel, uh, doing evangelism in ways that are practical and straightforward, uh, as well as a number of other things. But one of the things that frequently happened to him 
But I said, people were always asking him questions out of the blue. He would settle into the airplane, pull out a book, and just kind of try to settle in and, and not be noticed. And inevitably, almost every flight, people would be asking him questions. So one of the things that he tried to share with us is, you know, we do this all the time. And generally, it's because we notice something that's a cue about something we may be interested in or that we see as a connection. I, I don't know, did any of you read in the Blade the little historical account that was written about uh, the Borngasser family? There, of course, there's, there's something like that, I think, every week in the Blade. And it's fascinating to, to read those stories. And that something like that could be written about all your family. But one of the things that struck me about the Borgast family is because, um, and I'm not sure, I think it was Carl's mother um, was either a sister or, or related to a, a lady that uh, I knew really well from where I grew up. And a woman by the name of Eleanor Bissell. And, and Eleanor uh, used to write for the newspaper. So she was always calling people up, wanting to know what was going on. <laughs> so she could write her little column for the newspaper. Um, and they didn't surprise folks because those connections were natural. So I want you to. Be open to what I believe God's Holy Spirit is wanting to show us from this account of what happened as Philip was faithful. He recognized after God called him, God placed on his heart to do something. He recognized what was happening on that chair. Paul was reading. He makes it got closer. He obviously must have been reading out loud because he could tell that it was he was reading from the prophet Isaiah. So he recognized a way to connect and to ask a question that would open an opportunity, possibly, maybe not, but at least would give an opportunity. And, and you know, we don't always and I hope maybe you've noticed that, especially as you read in the scriptures, the book of Acts, as you read in Paul's epistles, you, you hopefully notice that not every single time that the apostles make connections with folks does it immediately bear fruit. There, there's many times that we read where they have to move on. But they continue to listen to the call of God's Spirit, and they continue to look for ways to make those connections. What have you been reading? Do you understand? And so, after he was invited to jump up in the chariot and join this Ethiopian eunuch, he simply helped him think about what Isaiah was saying. Philip knew that the prophet Isaiah had written several hundred years prior to his time. He knew that the prophet Isaiah was called and used of God to speak to God's people those several hundred years ago. But he also believed, certainly, out of his life experience, that not only did God speak to God's people five, six hundred, close to six hundred years prior to the prophet, but that God was speaking to him and to the people right now through this same prophet. And that's not unusual. We, we are often challenged to think it's useless or pointless, but it's not. I mean, 
why, why would my granny want not only for her grandchildren, her daughter, her grandchildren, her great-grandchildren, to grow up reading the same old book? Unless she knew that God could do something with that book. And sometimes things change. Uh, one of my big frustrations right now is <laughs> we, we have a new automobile so Nancy can haul the grandchildren around. And the compounded thing doesn't have an owner's manual. <laughs> well, it does. It's on your phone. I don't want it on my phone. I want a book in the glove compartment that I can pull out whatever I need to and look to it. <laughs> yeah, print it off. <laughs> I don't think Nancy wants that junk sitting around inside the computer. <laughs> well, I'm going to put down that rabbit trail just to remind you that there's still available to us those ways of learning and discerning and imparting the same truth, even in new ways, different ways. Sometimes that we aren't always all that thrilled about, but other times in ways that are incredibly important, of course. So I want to ask you to be thinking about that. So think about in this text, as Philip asks this question, this man responds. Philip simply tells him. You know, when you read in Isaiah, you read about the reality of people's sinfulness. And then you hear numerous times as you read through Isaiah, God saying he's going to do something about it. That he's going to send someone. He's going to send one holy and righteous who will give himself to be a suffering servant who will bear the sins and the iniquities of the people. Whose blood will be a righteous offering for cleansing God's people. And he said, we believe Jesus did this because think about it. You think about what we know happened in Jerusalem. What happened to Jesus of Nazareth? And we believe it even more because a lot of us have seen and experienced Jesus in our own lives after he was crucified, after he was raised from the dead. And this man chose to believe what Philip was sharing with him because the Word of God spoke to his heart, the Word of God spoke to his condition, and the witness of what he had heard connected with what this man was telling him about Jesus. He had never met Jesus until Philip introduced him to Jesus. In our lives, every day, and I know this is true. I'm not going to say I'm true for every single person sitting here or listening online, but I know it's true for most folks. Because I hear people say it, and I can relate to it because it happens to me almost every day. God calls us. The Spirit of God places something in our mind. We read something, and it gets our attention. We hear something, and it gets our attention. We, we discern God's asking us to do something. Maybe we don't do it. That's usually the context I hear about it. Folks talking about how, oh, you know, I felt God telling me to do something or do this or do that, and I, I, just, I just didn't for whatever reasons. So the first thing I want to ask you to remember and lay hold of the truth that we believe that God is calling. God speaks to us. Inviting us to opportunities that happen every day in our lives. Then it's for us to decide whether we're going to step into that opportunity. And of course, of course it's risky. 
But opportunity isn't. Every good opportunity, every great thing that we happen, will happen in our lives that we might do carries with it the reality that it might not go the way we hope. It's certainly true about the most important decisions we ever make in life, which are the decisions about our relationship with God and Jesus Christ. Because they're eternal. They're about today and they're about forever. It's not just whether we get married or not get married, whether we have a family or don't have a family, what we do with our work career, which are all important decisions as well, but they're not eternal. They have eternal implications, but they're not. And so stepping into those opportunities is incredibly important. As he did so in this account, the Ethiopian responded. There's water right there. What's, what's to prevent us? What's to stop us from going down for you baptizing me? And so Philip does. And then God moved Philip on. The Ethiopian went on towards home. In our lives, Every day. Every day. And it doesn't matter how young we are or how old we are. God continues to call, gives opportunities. And choosing to discern God is invested in our lives is an important choice. I find that so often we have to take special care to remind young folks that you're never too young to be a minister. God has called upon your life as well. And it's important for us to tell them that, to share that with them, maybe find simple little ways of connecting with them about that. You know, like, like telling stories. I used to tell my kids stories. When I was little, my mom used to take us every Tuesday after school. She would pick us up. I dreaded it. Every Tuesday would be the only Tuesday we got picked up, otherwise we walked or rode the bus. Every Tuesday she'd be there to pick us up to take us to the nursing home, St. Joseph's Nursing Home, where the Weir family would sing. But you know what I learned? How do you think the people at the nursing home responded? Have you ever, have you ever gone to, have any of you ever gone to the nursing home? How, how do those folks usually respond when they see kids? Do they get mad at you and say, get out of here, we don't want to see children? No, it's just the opposite. They want to get a hold of you, usually. They want to talk to you. They, they, they reach out their hand, hoping that you'll take hold of their hand or give them a hug. You have so much to give. And not just at the nursing home. On the playground, in the classroom, at home. And in the flip side of that, we also have to make a special effort to remind folks at that stage in life who are feeling like it's gone past. There's nothing more for them. But that's not true. We understand it's important to hear it and to acknowledge it that they can't do what they used to do. And that's true. They can't do all of the physical things. Maybe don't remember things as well as they once did. But they still have purpose. I say it again and again in that book, my Grammy, at the end of her life, she lived to be just a hundred. She died about a month after she turned 100 years old. But for the last several years, she lived with my mom. She had several strokes. She couldn't walk by herself anymore. She, she couldn't always clothe herself anymore, or all of those basic things. 
And one of the things she would ask me frequently when we would go to visit, she'd say, why am I still here? Clarence is in heaven. She'd talk about her mom and dad in heaven. She'd talk about other people in heaven. I, I, I don't understand why I'm still here. And I'd always say, Grammy, I don't know, but we're glad you are because we love you. And we really enjoy seeing you. And the kids would climb up in her lap, and before long, she wouldn't be asking that question anymore. But making that choice to respond when the Spirit of God opens our eyes, our ears, to see the opportunity today, tomorrow. Recognizing that Sure, there's an awful lot of folks who don't know all that you know about the Word of God, but you can share with them the simple things that speak to their condition. Literally, if somebody is hungry, as we offer them food that they need so they don't starve, we can also ask them, do you know that there is a God who loves you more than I do, who not only wants you to have something to eat today, but wants you to know that He is the bread of life. And He will give you all that is necessary for eternity if you turn to Him. And, and this is how. Just those simple connections that God invites us to make with folks in our lives. Maybe, maybe one of the questions, one of the things you can ask is, what are you reading? Or, what's been happening in your life? Or, what are your children up to? Or, what's your neighbor doing? Have you seen them lately? Responding out of faithfulness and service to what God makes available for us to do in ministry. Because hopefully it's been emblazoned on our hearts and our minds because we know without a doubt that God loves them more than we do. And I mean that in a positive way. God loves them more. God has more invested in our children, in our grandchildren, in our neighbors, in our friends, in our enemies than we do. We always will. He wants folks to know why the suffering servant came. Why Jesus bore our sins and our iniquities. Why Jesus, when he was being crucified, didn't try to get out of what was happening to him but instead knew that this was why he came. So that people could experience freedom from sin and death and condemnation and experience new life through faith in him. And the joy and deliverance of being born into that new life and living it out in gladness and celebration. Being able to share that witness with anyone else to whom God gives us opportunity. I'm going to ask you this morning to simply pray about two things right now. And there are two things that God promises us. Jesus promised us that if we have faith in Him, He gives us His Holy Spirit. So, are we, are we listening, are we heeding God's Holy Spirit that Jesus has promised us? That gives us these opportunities like He gave to Philip. If not, it's not a secret. All we simply need to do is trust Him in Jesus. Ask Him, Lord, please continue to work in me through the power of the Spirit. Help me to be more attentive. And one of the things that you discover happens is every single time you say yes, you respond to the Holy Spirit, you hear more. You become better empowered to be able to notice what God is doing 
all around you, within you, every day. And secondly, are we taking the opportunities we have right now? What are you reading? What are you sharing? What is God doing in our lives so that others around us know that there's a God who has more invested in them than anyone ever will? And that he indeed intends for good, for holiness, for life. Would you pray with me for a moment? Gracious God, we thank you, Lord, for what you did through Philip to change this man's life. We thank you, Lord, for what you've done in our lives through so many folks that have changed our lives. And we ask that you would help us to hear every day those whispers, to see every day those visions around us of what it is you're making available to us to do, to share, to offer to others. And Lord, we, we pray that you would empower us in Jesus' name to share simply those things that we know, to ask a question if it's a question, or to, to share an insight that provides the opportunity, or especially when someone asks us to respond. So we pray, Lord, for your glory to be done in us and through us, that our lives are full and rich, and that others are saved in the glorious wonder of Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. We're going to sing together our closing hymn, Here I Am, Lord, number 593. You're welcome to stand. Um, if you also want to spend just a few moments in prayer, reflecting on the Word of God, you're certainly welcome to do that. Let's praise God together.
go in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and He promises to be with you always to the ends of the earth. Go in peace.